In this module, we're going to learn about a new kind of function and its graph, and we'll use some new symbols that look like this. We've already looked at two varieties of functions. Linear functions all appear on a graph as a straight line, and quadratic functions give you some sort of parabola. We've seen both of these in other modules. Now we're going to study functions that look like this. It's new. It's different. You've never seen an algebra expression with the variable as an exponent. It's called an exponential function. And when we want to plot its graph, we go back to our very first way of drawing graphs. We plot some points as many as we need. We have five of them here. Locate them on the plane, connect them with a smooth curve, and here's what the graph looks like. Two things to notice. Follow the graph to its right, and it gets steeper and steeper. Follow it to the left, and it creeps closer and closer to the x-axis. We can draw lots of other exponential curves the same way by changing the base. And as we increase the size of the base, the upward curve becomes steeper and steeper, as you see here. You can also see that a negative exponent makes it go the opposite direction. And all the curves pass through the point 0, 1. Exponential functions and graphs have lots of useful and some rather unlikely applications. You've probably heard of some of them. Now ready for something new and even clever. We've got a new function, y equals 2 to the power of x, and we know how to get the inverse of a function. So here's the graph, which is the reflection, the mirror image of our exponential curve. But what is it? All we know is that it goes through the point 1, 0. We don't really understand it until we find its algebra formula. So let's use our rules for finding an inverse. We switch x and y and solve for y. But that leaves us with a problem. x equals 2 to the power of y. But we've never seen anything like this before, so we don't know how to solve for y. Is it time to panic? Not quite. We've done this sort of thing once before. Think back to a long time ago when you had just learned about squares, and suddenly you were confronted with this problem. How did we end up handling that? We invented a new symbol, square root a new function to describe our answer. We didn't have a good way of calculating numbers like the square root of 8. We had to use a table for calculator, and we still do. But we still knew how to use the square root in other problems by using the different properties of square roots, like the one you see at the bottom here. We're going to do something a whole lot like that to solve the problem we have with that y exponent right now. We'll invent a new symbol, learn about its properties, and use it even before we understand it completely. Here's the new symbol. We read it as log x to the base 2. Sounds like now is the time to panic. But it isn't. Just as we have on the left here, two statements that say the same thing. y equals the square root of x, and y squared equals x. The top one solves for y, the bottom one solves for x. In the same way, we have on the right two statements that say the same thing. y equals log x to the base 2, and 
2 to the power of y equals x. The top one solves for y, the bottom one solves for x. So here's the formal definition of log, or logarithm. The base A can be any positive number. Now if we fill in the numbers, can we actually work out a logarithm like this by hand? Sure we can. Here's an example. If we convert it into the corresponding statement about exponents, we can even see why it's true because 2 cubed equals 8. Another way of stating the same problem. To what power do I have to raise the base 2 in order to get 8 as my answer? I have to raise it to the power of 3. Now that's not so hard. Of course that means you can have problems with different bases. Here's one for you to try. Log 81 to the base 3. Or, what power of 3 will give an answer of 81? Think about it and come back with your answer. I could probably work it out in my head, but I'll do it the easy way instead. I translate to the exponent shape, as we just saw a moment ago, rewrite 81 as a power of 3, and I have my answer. x equals 4. We can expand this same technique to handle more complicated problems like this log 4 to the base of 32. Once again, I rewrite it as an exponent, and then I change both sides to powers of 2. Since they're both in powers of 2, I can compare the exponents. And I find that 2 to the power of 5x and 2 to the power of 2 are the same thing. So 5x and 2 must be the same thing. 5x equals 2. And I have my answer in no time at all. One particular base that's used very often is 10. It's used so often, in fact, that base 10 logs are called common logarithms. Here are a couple of common logs you can work out in your head. Others you can't work out yourself, but like a square root, you can look them up in a log table, or you can use the key marked log on your calculator. Of course, that only gives you an approximate answer. Take a look at this one, for example, right now. Use a log table or calculator to find this log, and then come back.
I found these two answers, a short one from the table and an eight-place answer from the calculator. And what's the real answer? Well, it could be a good deal longer than either of these, but this is close enough for now. When logarithms were first invented, 10 was the most common base. It was the best for doing arithmetic. But now another number is important for new and different applications. It's called E. E is a strange irrational number like pi, and the logarithms of E are called natural. E pops up in many different places. And it's curiously involved in a strange equation that connects three unusual numbers that you've already encountered, E, I, and pi. So how do we go about using log base E? Natural logarithms are just like common ones. You still need a table or a calculator. Often their symbol is written LN instead of log base E. Natural logs are most useful for many scientific applications. In another module, you'll learn some of the properties of logarithm functions and how to use them for calculations. But first, you'll want to read more about them in your text until you're as familiar with logs as a lumberjack. Good luck.